to be a good teacher as well as a good leader. I'm privileged today to welcome you all to this webinar. First, let me welcome our beloved principal, Dr. Anil Kumar, to inaugurate this webinar. I welcome you, sir, with great pleasure. Today's chief guest, Dr. Krishnan, sir, is the Dean of School of Social Science and Policy, and also the Head Department of University, Bihar. He is my beloved teacher, and he guided my PhD in Calicut University. Sir, I welcome you with great pleasure. I limit my words. I welcome all of you, especially I welcome our management representatives, RGC coordinator, my learned colleagues, faculty and HODs from other colleges, students from Bangalore, and all my students in Parishirada College. I welcome all of you to this webinar. Thank you. Audible. <laughs> Sir, is audible. And, okay, now audible. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, can I start? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, very good morning. A very good morning, all. Most respected chief guest of today's webinar, Dr. Krishnan Chalil, Dean School of College, Father Burgis Kalamaudi, respected Bursar, Father George Alimutil, teachers from various colleges, participants, faculty members of our college and other colleges. It gives me great pleasure to associate with this 
national webinar entitled is virtual teaching a new normal experiences and exposures and experiences from indian experiments first of all i congratulate the department of economics for choosing the appro most appropriate topic for a seminar for the webinar and also finding the most appropriate resource person to this webinar our resource person today professor dr krishnan chalil is basically i would say the most dedicated teacher academician researcher a social scientist who is always giving full dedication and commitment to all his exposures all his academic activities and also he is a 100% teacher in the sense that he is a researcher he is an academician he is a person who is highly involved in research teaching learning and also extension activities regarding krishnan sir i have close association with krishnan sir on many occasions i chaired some of his sessions in national seminars in different colleges and also i i i i, I am in uh, i also associated with him when i went to the government college kodancheri uh, for giving approval for a research department there he served as he started his career as a professor uh, as a teacher in marthoma college chungathra and then to kodancheri government college served in different capacities as professor principal vice principal and also he has uh, contributed very much to the development of various institutions where he was uh, a teacher and uh, it is also uh, at his credit various achievements he has so far produced 14 phds and five are still progressing published the different articles 60 articles in approved journals and one or three seminars presented in different uh, sessions and also recipient of most uh, uh, important awards like mm gani award for best teacher uh, father dr jos tekan award professor shiva prasad memorial award best so social scientist award and uh, so many achievements he has in his credit and uh, uh, he has also completed a number of research projects 10 research projects authored five books therefore the academic contribution is is some of the academic contributions i have just listed we are very proud sir we are very happy you as a resource person for this uh, today's seminar and uh, the topic Uh, is also relevant in the sense that today we are living in a very difficult situation the covid pandemic is uh, we are struggling with the uh, pandemic situation and we are uh, always now we are living with uh, covid 19 the campus the whole campus has now taken uh, a different uh, form of teaching we have chipped we have all we all online teaching using different platform in this circumstance this topic is also very relevant i am very happy to associate with this uh, program and i wish all the best to this program thank you
Sorry for the inconvenience caused. Dr. Krishnan Chalal joined as Dean in the School of Social Studies and Policy in the Central University of South Bihar in 2019. His areas of expertise includes development economics, e-governance, rural banking, and women empowerment. This eminent person had adorned various positions from associate professor to reader to vice principal to principal in charge in various aided and government colleges throughout Kerala. The long 23 years of teaching and research was honored by the University of South America by conferring DLED in 2016. He has completed 10 research projects funded by various agencies like UGC, ICSSR, CDS, KSHE, NISG, etc. He has to his credit five books, 15 chapters, and various books, 60 articles in journals of reputation, and more than 100 seminar presentations, and awards, a token of recognition, nervous tape back. In 2016, he was awarded MM Guinea Award for the best college teacher by the University of Calicut, which was followed by Professor Shiva Prasad Memorial Award for the best college teacher of Kerala in 2017. In the year 2019, he was bestowed with Father Dr. Joe Stecken Award for the best college teachers of Kerala Institute by Christ College Irangalakuda and also best social scientist award from Grabs Educational Charitable Society, Chennai. He is a life member of Kerala Economics Association and Indian Distance Education Association. With this brief introduction, I would like to invite Dr. Krishnan Chalan to bless the participants with his valuable insights. Welcome, sir. Hello, sir, please unmute. Now audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, okay. Okay, good morning. Uh, my beloved friend and your principal, dynamic principal, uh, Dr. Anil Kumar. My close friend and uh, the department of Parishiraja College, Dr. Silvi T.S. And the representatives of the management of Parishiraja College the Bursar, the faculty members like uh, Mr. Amel, and also the participants, a warm good morning to all of you. Uh, getting this invitation from the head of the Department of Economics, 
I agreed to be with you in this morning. So I share my uh, gratitude to the uh, Department of Economics for giving me an opportunity to share some of the thoughts on the topic which they have chosen. Parisiraja College Pulpalli is not a new institution to me. I visited your college several occasions. Uh, I could also got a golden opportunity to guide Dr. Sylvie for her PhD program. And also I could uh, associate with the selection of some of the faculty members of your college and so on and so forth. And very recently, Dr. Anil Kumar has joined as the principal of your college, with whom, as he had mentioned already, I have close association for quite long back. So with this brief introduction, I first of all congratulate the college for hosting a national webinar in this pandemic. Uh, even being a remote uh, situated college, your college is academically so involved in this pandemic is a very interesting sign. So I congratulate the management, the bishop, and also the principal, and uh, similarly the departments for making use of available technology for sharing some of the thoughts on the recent developments in education sector. Dear friends, as you know that, uh, Education sector has been disrupted vastly during this COVID-19. So COVID-19 is not a mere health crisis. It has created crisis and havoc in different sectors of the economy worldwide. But being part of the education sector, we are much worried about what is the destiny of education. What is the impact of this COVID-19 pandemic on the education sector? Because this is a crisis which we had never thought of. In the beginning, we thought it is only a, just like a fever. And Kerala has taken several steps to combat this major disease. So we thought within one or two months, this will subside and the economy will move to the normal situation through the governmental efforts and all. But contrary to our belief, it has been thundering. This disease has been thundering all around the world. No economy has been affected by this COVID-19. And uh, this, COVID, this COVID was uh, occurred as far as education sector is concerned at a crucial time because the March end, the first lockdown was announced. Most of the seminars, conferences, etc. were cancelled. The public transport system has been halted and the schools and colleges were closed at a time that the final year examinations were expected to be held. So this is first a shock to the education sector because the future of the students were based on their examination, their grading the examination and timely announcement of the results and all. And if you look at the other, other stream, even now we are facing troubles. Now, even some of the institutions could not conduct their admissions for the 2021 academic year. So in both ways, this pandemic has disrupted the education activity as far as the final year students are concerned. Their vertical growth to the higher studies for employment, etc. was badly affected. Coming to the other side, the students are expected to learn further after their courses like plus two or SSLC or degree course, they will be expecting a larger uh, you know, platform for their studies. That has also been affected. Now students are 
not dare to move to other countries, other states as well, for higher education this academic year. So in such a situation, what is the solution for education sector is the matter of huge heat discussion all over the world. So immediately after the announcement of the lockdown and other things, most of the institutions have switched over to what we call the virtual teaching or online teaching, etc. But we Indians are not familiar to this new mode of education. Though virtual teaching and uh, online learning has been there in the policy planks, policy reports, and also several platforms, we have online education, massive online platforms, etc. We were never turned to the use of it, or we were never promoted it among our students and faculty members. Even the Calicut University syllabus, there is some course insisted by the Board of Studies that can be selected from MOOC or SHOEM platform of the UGC. But I think none of our educational institutions, even in Kerala, have promoted this type of MOOCs courses even on a smaller scale. So now things have changed. We are all seeking refuge in the virtual learning platforms. And we have proceeded further. Now, not only teaching and learning, but even assessments are also being done through virtual platforms. Most of the central universities, including my university, we have conducted the final semester examination through online using the open book examination system. And several competitive examinations are also conducted like this, entrance examinations. And recently, Calicut University has conducted its final semester examination for some of the degree courses by online. So online teaching or virtual teaching has become the norm of the day. So the question is, uh, are we prepared for that? What are the strengths and weaknesses of this system? How we can move forward? Similarly, is this system will continue for long? That means, will it be a new normal in the educational sphere and all? These are some of the pertinent questions one can see when we look at the uh, different dimensions of the virtual teaching. So in this uh, one day, sorry, uh, one hour uh, webinar, I will share with you some of the thoughts I have uh, in mind through reading and also collecting some of the information uh, directly from the students and uh, faculty members. I will just share you the different dimensions of virtual teaching experience from India and also some of the experience from other countries who have faced such a crisis in several occasions. So please uh, listen to uh, my PowerPoint uh, for a while, then we will go for some discussion. So, uh, let, let me discuss, my topic is virtual teaching learning, the Indian experience. Okay, now, this is the introductory points which I share with you. Situations of crisis and conflicts are the biggest hurdles in the path of education. So the education sector has been witnessing several type of crises throughout the world. The crisis may be man-made crisis, or it may be nature-made crisis like flood, or drought, or earthquake, etc. And also man-made crises are also there. Maybe Hartal for several days, or there is a destruction of some of the facilities, 
So this crisis become a common feature as far as the education sector is concerned. But the question is, can we halt to this education when we meet with some of these crises? So here I should uh, say that there is a quarter, there is a there is a saying that it is difficult to stick to the traditional road when the road itself has crumbled. This is the real situation nowadays. It is difficult to stick to the traditional road when the road itself has crumbled. That means we have to find some new roads for our travel and that is what is happening all over the country. So when you look at the crisis which I have just mentioned about, not only in India, but even different countries of the world, one can see several crises in the last uh, past uh, several years. For example, in 2016, Italy experienced three violent and powerful earthquakes, but they were unstoppable. And to continue the teaching learning process, Italian universities and educational institutions used Webex, an online tool by Cisco. This is one example. Secondly, in February 2011, a 6.3 magnitude earthquake shook Christ Church and the University of Canterbury collapsed. Information technology and online learning helped the university to restart its operations and gave them a second life. Another example, at New Orleans, Southern University converted itself into an e-learning campus after the violent hurricane created a havoc. Several online courses were offered and mobiles were used to provide education to the displaced students. So these are some of the country experiences which I shared with you. In most of these crises and disasters, they, they, they shifted to some new ways of finding solution to these issues. The most recent disaster, as we all know, is in the form of the COVID-19, which is spreading like a forest fire around the world. This is the very recent crisis which every country has been facing now. Various schools, colleges, and universities have discontinued in-person teaching. As per the assessment of the researchers, it is uncertain to get back to normal teaching anytime in the near future. These circumstances make us realize that a scenario planning is an urgent need for academic institutions. So online learning, remote working, and e-collaborations exploded during the outbreak of Corona virus crisis to, uh, to meet the emergency situation. Emergency situation. Many universities around the world have fully digitalized their operations, understanding the dire need of this current situation. There was an overnight shift of normal classrooms into electronic classrooms or e-classrooms. During this tough time, the concern is not about whether online teaching learning methods can provide quality education. It is rather how academic institutions will be able to adopt online learning in such a massive manner. This point is very important because our question is not that of uh, the online teaching or learning uh, can provide quality education or it is an alternative to the regular education. But our main issue is that being the provider of education, the schools or the colleges or the universities are able to adopt online learning in such a massive manner. 
because it requires lot of uh, you know strength uh, strengthening of the infrastructure facilities but how many institutions in india have this type of strengthened infrastructure facility is a matter of concern so a general agreement has reached now that when disasters and crises occur schools and colleges need to be resilient and should find new ways to continue with the teaching learning activities so this is a common consensus so virtual teaching and learning is the alternative suggested by many countries and uh, policy makers so when we come to the arguments for virtual teaching several arguments can be seen the major arguments are associated with accessibility affordability flexibility learning pedagogy lifelong learning and the policy are some of the arguments related to online pedagogy these are some of the arguments that the the accessibility affordability and flexibility these are some of the often uh, cited arguments for uh, the online learning the severe explosion of corona virus disease can make us add one more argument in terms of online learning that is online learning serves as a panacea in the time of crisis so this is we can add no this point also with the traditional arguments for online learning rapid developments in technology have made online education now very easy now we can see that most of the terms like online learning open learning web based learning computer mediated learning blended learning m learning virtual learning etc for example have in common now so we are talking about all these concepts and you know words in our day to day interaction online learning is defined as learning experiences in synchronous or asynchronous environments using different devices for example mobile phone or laptops etc with internet access so there are two types of online learning mechanism one we can see that it is a synchronous way of online learning and second one is asynchronous way that i will tell you now what is the difference between these two so synchronous learning means it is structured in the sense that it is a structured learning mechanism that students attend live lectures there are real time interactions between teachers or educators and learners and there is a possibility of instant feedback so this is what is known as synchronous learning so this is a real time learning the student and teacher see each other and they can share their content they can discuss each other so the instant feedback can also be made so this is synchronous way of online learning but most often synchronous may not work so the synchronous learning requires that there should be a, a sufficient bandwidth of internet there should be sufficient uh, you know availability of gadgets etc at the time of you know this delivery of the lectures and all so sometimes we may go for what we call as asynchronous learning which are not properly structured in the case of asynchronous learning what is the feature is that learning content is not available in the form of live lectures or classes it is available at uh, different learning systems for example in the google classroom or in the moodle system etc or using some youtube you know channels etc and forums instant feedback and immediate responses are not possible under such an environment so please uh, understand these two terms there are one is synchronous learning environment where the teacher or the educator and the learners are in sync with in sync with means they can see each other they can talk each other they can share their feedback whereas asynchronous learning platform means that the uh, environment is such that um, th there is no a uh, real time transaction of ideas whatever the teacher has 
uh, you know spoken that will be recorded in the form of video or audio and that can be used by the learner at his or her convenience this is also used very widely in the online uh, teaching platform and you can come you can see that a number of uh, uh, you know uh, online learning mode is now available and google suite become very popular for example uh, under the google suite it is a mechanism that is a part of the uh, gmail uh, you know account holders can have this there is a free version and also the google suite full suite can be available on payment just like the zoom which you are using under the google uh, suite there are different uh, you know uh, uh, you know platforms for example we have gmail for mailing for communication google forms it is one of the widely used uh, you know uh, mechanism for collecting information uh, getting feedback uh, so many things registration to seminars etc google forms we have calendars for fixing the schedules and all that google drive for saving large files Google Hangouts and Google Jamboard and Drawings, Google Classroom, and there is open board software, not a Google product, helps in recording meetings in the form of files. These tools can successfully be used as an alternative for face-to-face -face classes. So these are some of the suits or the programs which we, the teachers and students, are using very frequently during the period of COVID. And also there are some other platforms, not only the Google uh, platform, we have platforms like the uh, Microsoft Skype, Adobe Connect, Microsoft Team, and few more, though Zoom emerged as a clear winner in the, in the beginning of the COVID. Now, you know, uh, even uh, Google Classroom is also coming up along with that. And another point one you can see is that a lot of edutech startups have grown during this COVID, understanding the demand for edutech, uh, you know, instruments. But if you look at the history of the edutech uh, in the world, edutech is not a new phenomenon. So new inventions or innovations in the uh, technology, using the technology, have made uh, education sector uh, disrupted several ways. Uh, now also you can see the education sector is disrupted. We have a mindset of uh, online education now. So if you look at the history uh, uh, of the edutech, uh, you know, um, through the ages, one can observe that writing slates were used in the Indian school during uh, uh, 1100s. And in the year 1440, First printing press was invented by Johannes Gutenberg and accordingly we have textbook and also some of the printed material for our education system. In the 1600s, Abacus, most of you know that, it helped students in understanding fundamentals of mathematics. In the year 1913, Thomas Edison promoted film clips as a replacement for teachers. In 1927, Sidney Prasi invented the first teaching machine, famously called the MCQ machine. So these are the journey what you can see. In the 1960s, the first online education in the world originated at the University of Illinois. So these are some of the world level experiments. So when you come to India, it was in 1994, India's EduTech journey finally began with the launch of EduCom. So this is the first experiment in India. Recently, around 200, 2010, EduTech startups entered the market intending to disrupt the education sector. You are very famous EduTech company. You know that everybody is, uh, you know, Tank, the name Baiju's. Baiju's app become a trendy EduTech among the students, among the parents nowadays. It became one of the most valued tech, valued edutech companies in the year 2019. Recently, they have, uh, they have bought some of the uh, uh, bigger, uh, you know, edutech uh, 
firms and it become one of the most one. Uh, and also you can see that when these type of edu techs are introduced, there may be some uh, apprehension about whether this will uh, stand long and all that. But our experience is that uh, now you know that we are all familiar with what we call as Paytm, Google Pay, Mobivik, Phone Pay, etc. Because these are all digital payment companies. It was not there in our mind, in our economy before 2016. So only when the demonetization was announced and implemented in India, people were going for that. So similar, uh, you know, um, uh, experience will happen to education sector as well. So these edutech companies have foresee such developments in the education sector. So in this pandemic outbreak, you can see that edutech startups are hoping for improved performance. Recently, you might have noted that a Malayali company situated in the southern, uh, southern district of our state have got around two crore rupees uh, as the first price for developing a new online uh, platform similar to Google uh, Classroom and all that. And uh, some of the uh, uh, major famous edutech company I will just explain you. Uh, according to the report of the KPMG, a firm, and, a, and the Google, the edutech edu sector will boom and is likely to reach around $2 billion by 2020. This, uh, this is a prediction by KPMG's publication. And if you look at the famous edutech startups in the world, there are different startups, very famous startups only I will just mention. Baiju's I have already uh, discussed. Adan 247. Hello Learning, Aptus Learn, Asthma Cum, Board Infinity, Class Plus, Cyber Y, Egnify, M5, Extra Edge, iStar, Jangru Learning, Global Gyan, Lido Learning, Pesto, Vedantu, EduBris, Zoom Classroom, Zoom Business, Topper, UN Academy, Coursera, Kahoot, CISO, Khan Academy, e Padshala, Guru Q, and the list is so long. These are all the, the most famous, most used uh, edutech, uh, you know, applications in our education sector. So this shows that during this pandemic, the edutech startup have come in large numbers and they are ruling the education sector nowadays. So, so many uh, teachers, so many students, so many institutes are using these platforms for online education and all that. But is online learning and teaching without problems? There are several issues. Even in this webinar, some of the initial stage we have problems. Sound was not coming, etc. Students are also facing problems. Just I will note down some of the major issues which the online platform, the students and the teachers are facing. Not only the students, the teachers have also some problems. The major problems are downloading errors. Sometimes you cannot download the complete file. This may happen. Issues with the installation. Installing an application requires several steps. We are not due to that. Login problems may be there. Problem is the audio and video. Sometimes video may not, uh, may not open because the large video cannot open. Audio may not be clear. Sometimes student finds online teaching to be boring and unengaging, especially for primary school or even secondary school students. Personal attention is also a huge issue. We cannot, the teacher cannot give personal attention as in the classroom, face to face. Students want two-way interaction, which is sometimes gets difficult to implement, especially asynchronous learning, it is very difficult. Sometimes online content is all theoretical and does not let the students practice and learn effectively. So the uh, theoretical portions become a little boring. And very important thing is that mediocre course content. That means the course content should be interesting and lively for the learners most often it may not happen. Another point of difficulty is digital equity. It is inclusive. 
but who is included is a question under the digital learning ensuring digital equity is a crucial in this step type because unless the digital equity or digital inclusiveness is ensured a large number of students will be left out of education so this is an issue that has to be tackled not all the teachers and students have access to all digital devices internet and wifi unavailability of proper digital tools no internet connection or wifi connection can cause a lot of trouble due to which many students might lose out learning opportunities this is a normal uh, you know situation in india educational institutions must also ensure that all the educational apps work on mobiles as well in case students do not have laptops sometimes there is a such, such an issue some of the applications may not work in the mobile phones it will work only in the laptops so there must be steps to reduce this digital difficulties to a major extent when we come to the learner side the students are facing different problems other than what i have mentioned so far students feel that lack of community lack of community peer that is the peer learners in the classroom they have friends they can discuss each other but there is lack of community there are technical problems and difficulties in understanding instructional goals these are the major barriers for online learning as far as students are concerned in a recent study students were found to be not sufficiently prepared for balancing their work family and social lives with their study lives in an online learning environment this is also very important because the students are staying at home so they have family problem sometimes they may be forced to work with their parents so there is a life uh, education balance issue students are also found to be poorly prepared for several e learning competencies and academic type competencies some of the students are not aware of how to download how to make use of these facilities so many things are there also there is a low level preparedness among the students concerning the usage of learning management system the lms system the students are not fully aware about any of the uh, learning management system most often so the learning management system the google classroom or the zoom classroom or even the moodle classroom the open uh, learning system uh, the students are mostly not uh, well versed with the system is another issue and coming to the teachers teachers are also not devoid of issues several teachers are facing issues the urgent imperative to move online caused by the recent covid 19 has added to the stresses and workloads experienced by university faculty and staff who were already struggling to balance teaching research and service obligations not to mention the work life balance the teachers are also a little stressed teaching staff of all backgrounds and ages have had to prepare and deliver their classes from home with all the practical and technical challenges this entails and often without proper technical support the teachers also may not have the same uh, you know guard gates they have also the uh, internet issues they have also the uh, you know power failure issues and all that on top of that a significant challenge for teachers has been their lack of the pedagogical content knowledge this is very important most of the teachers are not tuned to the pedagogy of teaching online so most of them they fail as teachers the students may not get engaged they may not get interest as in the classroom because the classroom pedagogy and the online pedagogy are totally different but 90 95% of the teachers in india don't have adequate pedagogical content knowledge of the online teaching learning so for example the technical and administrative aspects of teaching online using 
uh, the different platforms and the tools and organizing workflows, even the teachers. For example, in my case, when this pandemic was announced, we were asked to work at home. We know simple things only how to use a you know um, um, WhatsApp message, how to send an email only. So we, the university teachers, are also facing problems how to make use of online platform for efficient teaching. So the design of the instruction is very key, very important for making this online or virtual teaching interesting and meaningful. But I told you that the online design pedagogy, online pedagogy is not clear. The teachers have not got any training in this issue. So online learning and teaching involve a diverse array of tools, resources, pedagogical approaches, roles, organization arrangements, and forms of interaction, monitoring and support, with many possible combinations of substitution and interaction. Instructional design and learning design can be characterized as a process or series of suggested steps that teachers can use to plan, implement, and evaluate their instruction. So the last paragraph is very important that while delivering a lecture, it should follow some instructional designs and learning design. The teachers are familiar with offline, only the classroom pedagogy of designing. They are not well versed, even little training they have got. So this becomes a crucial uh, stumbling block in making the virtual learning and teaching effective enough to make an alternative for offline education. Uh, why I am telling all these things is that even our Victor's channel in Kerala, it is a very good step uh, from the part of the state government. But my discussion with some of the school students, what all they're telling is that most of the teachers are boring. Most of the lecture classes are boring. The students cannot go with the teacher because, by, because the instructional design is not at all, not at all, compatible with online learning because these teachers who are taking classes in the Victor channel are not even got a single day training about how to make use of this technology. So this happens for university teachers as well. At the university level, you cannot see any type of channel like this, exclusive channels. But in course of time, it will come. Even the universities don't have. So here, this, is, this point is very important. According to Bates, a good quality design is associated with, that is, a, an online learning pedagogy is to be designed. That should have the qualities like clear learning objectives, carefully structured content, controlled workloads for faculty and students, integrated media, relevant student activities, and assessment strongly tied to decide learning outcomes. So any type of interaction or learning, teaching should have these, these different uh, dimensions. But we have to ask ourselves whether our teaching at present has any of these qualities, ingredients. What are those ingredients? Clear learning objectives. We have to keep in mind these are the learning objectives of my today's lecture. It should be structured clearly, content-wise. Workload of the faculty and students should be clearly marked out. We cannot give a long lecture. A video lecture should contain a, a, a specific content. Then only the students will be able to move with you. We should have also media integration. Different types of media can be integrated. Students should be given activities. And also there should be assessment. And assessment should be based on your learning objectives and learning outcomes. But this is normally, uh, we are in the infancy stage that I think. And for a successful online learning requires student-centered design. 
that is carefully thinking about what students will actually have to do to learn this is mostly lacking in our current transaction of online teaching second point is that successful online learning means not feeling alone and not forgetting that learning is social we learn from others and with others even if at a distance this social uh, feeling should be necessary and also a successful online course especially if it spans over multiple weeks promotes peer collaboration so a successful online course should also have peer collaboration the students should be able to collaborate themselves there should be groups in the in the classroom so there are facilities in the learning management system for these type of interventions and how we can make online learning effective for that three points are very necessary there should be effective planning before going for online teaching the teacher should have adequate planning beforehand second point is that learner preparation learner also should be prepared the learner cannot come with the empty hand most often what we can see is that the learners are coming they are sitting as if they are sitting in a theater they are just enjoying the class i have seen several learners they are coming as just layman they don't take text they don't take note they don't have pen etc so this may not work enhanced interaction there should be interaction between the teacher and the learner so these three points are very important so these are the ways in which instructors can help make the online experience more satisfying and effective so we have to ask our as teachers we have to ask our as are we prepared are we planned as i told you or told you that what are our learning objectives what are the content how it has been spaced how i can deliver this content how many videos have to be required how many online classes are required whether it should be synchronous or asynchronous and also how i can ensure interaction among the students is also very important so we can use different uh, online tools for that for example to hold live interactive classes one can use zoom google meet team link microsoft teams etc whiteboard fi google classroom can be used to upload assignments and lesson plans you can you can use this platform for giving assignments giving lesson plans and also evaluation itself clapboard story express recorder and loom are the software that can be downloaded on google chrome and used for recording video lessons lesson links that can be shared with the students students can go through them at their own place and space and pace and in the next class the topics can be discussed edu puzzle and kahoot are great tools that will attract the students attention they help in creating game based learning quizzes which can be conducted to judge how much students are grasping the topic so these are some of the tools which you can uh, familiarize later on and some of you are very um, active in this uh, you know tools i know but we can use these things in an effective manner other tools for example besides the tools which i have mentioned there are lot many others like instructables app for teaching bitly.com simbalu.com perdu writing lab owledu edutopia that can be explored to suit the teaching needs these interactive learning methods motivate students to be attentive in online classes these are the tools which make the students more attentive in the online classroom so the criticism that online classrooms are less engaging less interactive less peer uh, you know uh, engagements etc can be uh, can be uh, covered can be overcome by making use efficiently and sufficiently these type of tools and uh, there are also requirements that we have to strengthen uh, 
the virtual learning and teaching through different efforts. Many institutions and governments have come forward to make the virtual teaching learning more effective through various mechanisms. For example, upskilling and motivating teachers, organizing counseling sessions for stakeholders such as teachers, parents and students are some of the important measures taken by various administration in the recent past. Universities, colleges, government, they have taken some steps in this direction. Making a continuous effort to provide customized teaching learning material suitable for online classes is another way of facilitating the schooling of children. Customized teaching learning material can also be used. The central government has recently launched the PM eVidya platform, Prime Minister's electronic media platform with 12 new DTA channels, just like our Kite Victors, one for each class to reach out to all strata of society. These efforts have proved beneficial to a sizable chunk of the school going population. So these are some of the efforts taken by the government uh, and agencies, administration, to make uh, the, the online teaching and learning more effective. But still, we have to see some of the barriers. For example, uh, students and teachers also have their own struggles while accessing this online platform. Some of the things which I have already mentioned, but little more. For example, due to financial constraints, students are not able to access internet and are devoid of electronic gadgets and laptops, phone or computer or even radio and TV. This is very important because nowadays online teaching and online learning become very costly. Can a large section of the population get, get hold of it? This is a question. We, we all know that a smartphone is required for online teaching. But a good, good, good uh, you know, an adequate configured mobile phone requires minimum 10,000 rupees. Can a tribal student, can a marginalized society student can afford to that? That is very important. And also a mobile is not enough. Sometimes the student has to prepare the assignments. Mobile cannot help. Students require a laptop or a desktop. That also requires huge money. So the financial constraint is a major barrier. And those students who have facilities to attend online classes face barriers in terms of unavailability of physical space. For example, in some of the houses, there may not be adequate space for learning, which is equally applicable to teachers as well. That may happen. Suppose a teacher who is living in a quarters or in a rented house may not have this facility. There are also social barriers, such as discrimination against girls. This will also happen, not in Kerala I am talking about, but in other states. For example, even in Bihar, we are facing this. Girls are expected to do household chores instead of attending online classes in the mornings. In the morning, we, we, we had got an instruction from the vice chancellor that for the married girls, the teachers should not uh, conduct classes in the night because they have to spend their available time with the family. That is only for girls only. So this is a social barrier. In rural areas, boys are often expected to work with the parents on their family farmlands. In homes where TV and radio are available, the question of who has control over this gadget is also important. We may not have three or four TVs in a home. We will have only one TV. Sometimes the father is interested in one movie, the students will not care. And finally, most of the time, girls are not allowed to watch educational programs. This will also happen. So these are some of the barriers uh, in the Indian social context that we have to, social and economic context we have to understand. And when we come to the digital divide, a mention was made earlier. In Indian case, India is a great pond of digital divide. Only 24% of the households of students in India have internet access. 24% of the households of students. In urban area, 42% of the households have access. Whereas only 15% of the rural area households have access to internet. So how can we ensure 100% online education in India? So this is a fundamental question that needs to be answered and that needs to be 
um, considered by the policy makers and the administration. This is not the case with India alone. I will share some of the experiences of other countries. Some students without reliable internet access or technology struggled to participate in digital learning. For example, about 95% of students in Switzerland, Norway, and Australia have a computer to use for their school work. Only 34% students have a computer in Indonesia. You can see the difference. This is a data released by OECD, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. In the US, if you see, there is a significant gap between those from the privileged and disadvantaged backgrounds. While virtually all 15 year old from a privileged background said they had a computer to work on. Nearly 25% of those from disadvantaged background did not have a computer to work on. So this is the case with uh, USA. And in Indian case, you can see again, according to the key indicators of household social consumption on education in India report, Based on 2017-18 NSS survey, only 23.8% of the Indian households have internet access. Additionally, a mere 4.4% of rural households have a computer compared to 23.4% of urban households. Again, you can see the different layering difference between rural and urban. According to the Internet and Mobile Association of India, IAMAI, India internet 2019 report, only 33% of the women have access to the internet. That means 67% of the men have access. So you can see glaring inequality between the rural and urban area, between the men and women in the Indian context very glaringly. In the rural area, only 28% of the women had access to the internet. Whereas in the rural area, 72% of the men have access to internet. So this type of digital, uh, you know, differences, divide, make this online and uh, virtual teaching a difficult uh, situation and an alternative solution to uh, the real face-to-face -face education. So government has to uh, think of all these issues while considering virtual teaching on a uh, larger scale. So finally, uh, to conclude, uh, after having discussed about all these issues, now let us come to the SWOC analysis of virtual learning, the strength, weakness, and uh, opportunities and challenges of uh, virtual teaching to have a, uh, to have a uh, final uh, overview about what are strengths. Now we come to the strength of this uh, virtual learning platform. One is time flexibility. Time flexibility means that the students, the learner can access the material according to their convenience. For example, asynchronous learning, no problem. You can, for example, myself, I have uh, uh, recently during this COVID attended around three or four faculty development programs. One by IIT Madras, another by IIT Bombay, another by uh, um, Devastam Board College, uh, um, Kerala. And all these are uh, given through asynchronous mode. So I could complete it. So that time flexibility is there. Then location flexibility, anywhere, anytime. This is the, uh, the slogan of the online, uh, this flex location flexibility. Only thing is that you have to have a mobile at hand and the place where you stand or stay should have the internet connectivity. Then catering to wide audience. There is no bar, any age, any person can uh, access to online learning. Wide availability of courses and content. Wide availability means you can have different contents, videos and audios, and immediate feedback. Immediate feedback, especially in the case of synchronous learning only. These are some of the strengths which we have seen in my previous discussion. But it doesn't mean that only strengths are important, but we have weaknesses as well. I told you about the technical difficulties. The problem of login, the problem of uh, downloading, the problem of application installing, etc. Then learners' capability and confidence level. As I told you that, as in the classroom, the online also, we can see differentiated learners. All the learners cannot move 
along with the instructor this is a major problem time management time management in the sense that some of the places for example they may not have adequate connectivity they may not have taboos in the family so managing the time in the morning as i told you that girls are not expected to see the movie because they have to be in the kitchen to prepare sometimes the uh, you know the boys have to work with their farm so this will make some problem of time management distractions frustration anxiety and confusion this is very important weakness for example in the working at home listening the class at home there are so many distractions sometimes there may sound outside there is a frustration because the students may not understand what the teachers are talking there is stress and confusion that will also be very much part of this you know um, online teaching that we cannot they cannot share with anybody these problems then finally we have lack of professional sorry personal and physical attention there is no physical or personal attention to any student because we are seeing only in the screen so the the, the teacher cannot understand the problem which uh, you know uh, a particular student has these are some of the weaknesses and come to the opportunities opportunities i already told you there is scope for innovation digital development a lot of uh, edu tech companies are coming up uh, understanding the uh, limitations of the one tool they will add they will innovate upon the existing tools designing flexible programs considering the uh, limitations uh, weaknesses which we have just discussed uh, the uh, there is opportunity to uh, revisit the existing program and try for what we call it is a designing a flexible program uh, to suit the requirements of those people who have difficulty in continuing with this program and strengthen skills problem solving critical thinking and adaptability uh, we have to uh, make you know efforts to uh, promote the the skills of the teachers the skills of the students so that Uh, the the problem solving ability the critical thinking ability adaptability etc can be solved users can be of any age this is one important thing that is we have now lifelong learning there is no bar to entry into a course there is a bar in entry into a college but online learning anybody at any time any age can enter into an innovative pedagogical approach that is radical transformation in all aspects of education that is an opportunity we have to devise new pedagogical approach now it is known as sometimes it has been uh, seen that a new name has come panicogy panicogy means pedagogy online panicogy online panicogy means that this panic situation we have to develop a new pedagogy that is missing in the current educational uh, discourse that is also very important finally coming to the challenges there are so many challenges just, just we have discussed unequal distribution of ict infrastructure all the institutions are not sufficiently sufficiently equipped with ict infrastructure there are schools there are colleges they don't have even an online application they don't have a paid suit so how they can go about that is another issue then quality of education in order to make the online education qualitatively similar to the face to face education we have to strive hard the educator the administrator have to has to uh, think a lot in making their education qualitatively sound so the content has to be made such that uh, uh, such that uh, it is delivered on time now the major problem facing the online educators are even for our state syllabus the uh, victor channel teachers what they say is that they cannot complete their portions if they go like this so what we can do because they are only delivering the face to face content expected to be uh, expected to be transfer to be instructed in the classroom but can a teacher conduct the same uh, you know content delivery through online very difficult so either government has to cut short the syllabus 25% or 30 percentage make it <coughs> possible to be delivered through online so we have to uh, have a separate syllabus for online education as well then digital illiteracy is a major challenge as i said already all the students are not tech tech savvy 
there are illiterates among our students that should be uh, considered then digital divide that is another challenge india will uh, i don't know uh, how many years india will take to make a 100% digitally inclusive society because already we have seen the nss data or several database rural urban divide we have male female divide several things have been uh, pointed out earlier in my slide so this issue should also be taken into consideration then finally we have the technology cost technology cost is very important to get a what i say a smartphone best best is a smartphone with adequate features it requires huge amount um, that can be afforded to can the colleges can the education institutions afford to such a high cost for uh, incurring for building the infrastructure and also there is the, the problem of obsolescence obsolescence is in that the methodology the technique the tool the infrastructure which we use, we use today which we use today may not be uh, suited for uh, tomorrow's classes so we have to uh, take care of this obsolescence and also make everything uh, uh, you know there is a much effort is required not easy it is not a transfer of a webinar okay webinar is okay one hour it will be over but a continuous classroom interaction requires suitable planning and uh, suitable mechanism uh, from the part of the administrators to conclude both online and offline learning have their own problems offline has also its own problem that we know that the, the main problem as you know that there is transportation the problem of transportation the student need to come hours and hours in the buses in the uh, you know public transport so cost also another thing. to overcome these problem these problems of online and offline is the most challenging task of the educational administrators virtual learning and teaching become a new normal everywhere in the world so we have to get prepared for that be the teachers and be the learners the the two stakeholders in this context so i think in the near future there will be skip competition between and among the institutions in making their institutions techno savvy technologically sufficient and efficient in delivering the educational instruction so with these few words may i uh, conclude uh, now and uh, over to the organizers and participants okay thank you thank you sir for your valuable speech no thank you you have made this occasion great with the history of online education the various methods of online education and effective tools to make online education quality enhanced thank you once again sir yeah thank you participants now it is time for discussion you can raise your questions in the chat box meanwhile we would be providing link for the feedback form in the chat box keep in mind that you have to fill and submit it to acquire certificates so we have two questions yeah yeah please this is a question from adulya k s yeah what are some challenges you think the next generation will face mainly through these teaching methods mm -hmm. over to you sir yeah uh, actually those points have been um, discussed now that the challenge of the new generation is to cope up with the new technology based education to cope up with the new technology based education means that uh now teachers may not be available in front of the teacher so how the students for example we have been accustomed to a face to face learning the teacher is in front of us the teacher is there for any clearance of doubts etc but now that uh, you know space has been taken away by the technology right the technology so technology cannot be uh, replaced by the teachers that is true but a day will come where the universities and colleges will have to use both these ways that is known as the blended learning a blended learning mechanism will come into hold there is no doubt 
a certain percentage of the class deliverables are done through online and a certain part offline that is class you know face to face and also the new educational policy very rightly pointed out that they are promoting online education there will be a, a lot of virtual universities in india just like the private universities we will have more virtual universities maybe at the state level or at the central level that is what i feel okay are you clear thank you sir yes, sir. Ah, yes. sir here is another question how will yes. be the valuation process in this type of learning valuation means you are talking about valuation of your answer scripts mm, yeah not like that we have to value the students now yeah yeah there are there are i i just uh, already explained to you different learning management system available lms we call it as lms the institution can select any of the lms system for example pulpalli paisiraja college has chosen zoom as a learning management system their classes are conducted over the uh, zoom platform some of the colleges are using i told you google classroom in my university we are using moodle platform in some of the universities they are using ilms ilms means inflip net learned uh, learning management system so this learning management system has facilities for interaction with the students making assessments grading quiz program any type of things it is picking up actually we are not familiar with that that is why uh, what we call uh, we, we, we are uh, having some apprehensions but it is being done by uh, several institutions uh, without any fault right are you clear yes sir okay yes, sir. so there's another hmm. excuse me sir there's another yeah. question also hmm. from samabika mohammadra hmm. oh, how to strengthen, madam is there <laughs> uh, how to strengthen virtual teaching practices in the context of digital inequity this uh, is a major challenge yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, ma mohammadra madam uh, uh, very warm uh, good morning i couldn't see your face Mohabatra Madam is my colleague. Uh, she was the uh, previous head of the Department of uh, Development Studies before I joined there. Uh, I couldn't uh, check the participants list. That is why very warm welcome to Madam. Uh, she is from Odisha and now working with uh, Central University of South Bihar. Uh, Madam, as you said, um, so long as we have digital divide, I think uh, this can be made good by uh, strengthening the community radio. This is one my suggestion. community radio has been very much useful uh, in places like bihar orissa or jharkhand where more people have access to radio uh, very easily so just like the television uh, dedicated channels i think uh, uh, these type of radio programs are more uh, useful uh, in uh, um, bridging the uh, problem of digital divide this is one uh, thing second one is that the state government uh, can um, provide some facilities for example they can provide less um, um, cost uh, low cost mobile to the students uh, and also um, government can uh, provide uh, data packs on a subsidized basis because data is a major uh, you know cost as far as students are concerned for example in order to um, um, see in order to visualize or learn through a, a online platform i think currently as per the current data charge uh, a student requires around 500 to 600 rupees uh, mobile data plan uh, how is it possible for a poor student that is an issue so government has to subsidize uh, these type of data um, uh, packs and also government should uh, tie up with some edutech companies to provide what i call uh, these uh, mobile phones or uh, laptops 
uh, or tab <coughs> for example tab is also very useful to the uh, needy students i think uh, this will uh, help a uh, long way in reducing this digital divide otherwise it will take uh, years together it will take i think uh, it will take more than 50 years again uh, to 100% uh, uh, yeah. you know digital uh, inclusion is uh, possible in india okay yes sir. okay madam okay sir thank you sir. ah thank you thank you <laughs> okay it's a good presentation sir very ah fine thank you thank you <laughs> thank you nice so there's one more question also ah yeah e learning would be difficult for differently abled students how mm -hmm. could we manage the difficulty e learning so this is a uh, yeah. students yeah yeah this is a pertinent mm -hmm. issue uh even now this problem has not been solved um, but uh, i think government can um, uh, provide some facilities uh, for example those who are dumb uh, they can use this uh, sign language for example uh, through the television uh, sign language will work but those who are uh, blind uh, we have to um, think of some other solutions uh, I, i think in the due course Uh, some edu tech company will come forth uh, uh, with some new uh, mechanisms to solve this issue okay sure sir uh -huh. so there's another question do yeah. you think sir learning apps cause unemployment learning apps might uh -huh. cause unemployment Learning, learning apps, apps. Ah, yeah, yeah. learning apps so you, you you mean that learning apps will displace teachers and uh, there will not be much demand for teachers in the days to come right isn't it Unem unemployment as far as yes, teachers sir. are concerned right yes sir okay uh, this may happen in any technological development um, uh, for example when technology takes the space of a um, teacher automatically there will be um, um, changes in the workload and the teachers are appointed on the basis of the workload of the um, department or the school or the colleges so if the government says that uh, a, a certain percentage of the classes should be uh, viewed through online and only certain percentage through offline there will be automatically some reduction in employment but at the same time you must see that the uh, other side there will be some employment generated for example developing apps so many computer professionals will get employment so totally the employment uh, will not reduce but as a sector specific sector it will uh, surely reduce right because no employment is permanent uh, in the days to come you are not a permanent employer now the government is going for tenureial employment mm -hmm. that is you are appointed only for a tenure maybe for 3 years or 5 years mm -hmm. and if you are required you will be uh, again examined uh, through some mechanism and if you are fit for the job you will be selected otherwise you have to find this is what is happening in the foreign countries and that india is also expected to do this in the near future right yes sir mm. so there's a question from dr marina sadakal how can we evaluate participation mm. and interaction between mm. teachers and students in the virtual learning environment mm. how can uh, we evaluate yeah marin uh, good morning um, uh, there i told you that the learning management system whichever you use there are modules for uh, assessing the students their presence their attendance uh, etc through different uh, mechanism like for example uh, division of the students into peer teams you can group the students into three uh, five or six students in a group and the peer evaluation is also there not only the teachers are evaluating the peers can evaluate themselves so it will be a very interesting thing so i evaluate my peer for example i can evaluate uh, samabiga mohapatra madam and she will evaluate any other faculty member as learners so that uh, this type of evaluation uh, module is there in the learning management system but the problem is that as teachers we are not trained enough in making use of the 100% features of the lms which we are using this is the issue are you clear the idea so yes, we 
ah uh, we are not prepared we are not given any training in the operation of the learning management system all of a sudden or on an overnight you know order uh, the universities and your principal order you to continue online education we were also facing such problem in the beginning i was an illiterate semi illiterate in the case of online uh, teaching and learning in the first 2 3 months but necessity is the mother of invention as we all know i learned it still i am not 100% uh, you know technically sound i have to learn a lot that is how there are a large number of faculty development pro short term programs you have to attend to that and most of these fdps are in asynchronous mode you need not worry about your schedules you can go regularly as you for your schedule you can download the materials at your pace you can learn it so this technology can be uh, effectively used only through our practice our practice so there are mechanisms since uh, your college is using zoom i think uh, the principal can organize a training for all the teachers uh, how to use each and every uh, learning management system under zoom because you are using a paid zoom uh, application a lot of facilities are there lot more facilities and they are also upgrading facilities every now and then to strengthen suppose there is some weakness weakest you know area uh, where the zoom does not have that facility compared to the google meet there is a competition uh, among the edutech companies they will enhance those facilities okay marin are you clear yes sir ah. excuse me sir there's one more question from mm -hmm. akshaya k mm -hmm. do you think sir online learning badly affect the mental and emotional development of students really really uh, that is why many of the institutions are providing especially the department of psychology in every institution they are providing continuous support to those students who have mental stress mental stress will automatically come because the students are sitting alone in a room conversing with the uh, the shades of her or him with their teacher and most often uh, we have the problem of internet connectivity and everything even the teacher cannot convince the student that the teacher the student also cannot convince the teacher of their problems so uh, a patting uh, patting on the on the uh, back of a student may reduce the stress in the classroom right but uh, through this online we cannot a teacher cannot do that a teacher can call the student to his room of his room then ask them what is your problem what i can do for you but here it cannot be possible so the mental stress is that so how to reduce the mental stress the teacher has that is why i told you that the pedagogy the pedagogy of online teaching is yet to be streamlined the teachers should be given refresher courses in how to make use of the pedagogy for online teaching we have the pedagogical training only for face to face teaching so most of the teachers are failed in this covid time in effectively delivering their instruction to the students so that will also create a stress among the students right so we have to be very careful about that so the innovation on the part of the teacher is very important the teacher should be a researcher always he should evaluate whether my uh, instruction which we which i follow is inclusive can all the students can learn from me he can get feedback he can use the google docs for getting feedback so mechanisms are there if we are using it very fruitfully effectively there is no doubt some of the stress can be reduced right yes sir yeah 
starting with this, we have come to the end of the discussion. Mm -hmm. Not audible. Amel, not audible. Hello, sir. Not audible. Yes, now okay. Okay. Yeah, audible. Yeah, audible. Hello, sir. No. No, sir. Hello. Hello, am I audible now? Ah, uh, now okay. Hello. Uh, yes, yes, sorry for the inconvenience. Yeah. Respected principal, uh, respected principal, Dr. Anil Kumar K, Chief Guest of the Day, Dr. Krishnan Chalil. IQC coordinator Dr. Dilip Amar, respected fathers, HOD Dr. Sylvie TS, my dear colleagues, research scholars and dear participants. I use this opportunity to express my gratitude towards those who have made this seminar a great success. First of all, I express my immense gratitude towards Dr. Anil Kumar K, who gave wholehearted support and motivation for this program. Dr. Krishna Chalil enlightened the audience with his deep knowledge. sir. You have scanned the history of online teaching and has enriched audience. Thank you, sir. I extend my gratitude towards Father Vargis Kolamavudi, the CEO of the college, and Father George Alamutil, Varsar. Uh, thank you. Thank you, fathers. I thank Dr. Dilip Damar, IKC coordinator, for his encouraging words. Thank you, Dr. Dilip Damar. Our HOD, Dr. Sylvie T.S., who is the back if the department always stands up as in our, our endeavors. Thank you, mom, for your support and love. Sincere gratitude towards my colleagues, especially Dr. Mirna Sadatil, Christina K. and Anu. Also, I remember Lidin Matthew and Jibin Varghese for their technical support and Teresa Divya Sebastian for, their, for her cute angry. Last but not least, I thank all the participants on behalf of the Department of Economics who have made this seminar a success. Thank you once again. Okay, thank you from my part also for uh, uh, having a platform to discuss some of uh, the things which I know. I know only little. Don't, don't think that I am a master of arts in um, digital teaching. I am just a, um, a graduate now. Uh, I think uh, um, this have uh, this seminar have given me an opportunity to learn something only that I shared with you. So anyhow, uh, uh, my point is that this becomes a new normal. There is no doubt, no normal, and uh, the new education policy has highlighted that uh, uh, online learning will be uh, encouraged by the government. So I request everybody to be um, um, trained in the. A mode of online learning and online teaching for teachers and for learners, online learning, how to make use of that. It is one of the wonderful platforms. I have no worries about that. I no doubt about that. You can learn a lot of things even uh, in different crisis uh, situations. This is what my feeling. But um, this is a very laborious, very difficult uh, mechanism. The teacher has to uh, toil very much. That he, unlike in the classroom, we can go with a, an empty hand and a textbook only, but here it is not possible. Unless we have that design, your class will be a flop. Because once it is uploaded in the YouTube, it will be rated by uh, several people. So, okay, work from to today onwards. 
uh, I thank you, uh, Dr. Anil Kumar, sir, Dr. Silvi, Amel Marin, and uh, Dr. Dilip, uh, Shelji Matthew of your college, and also uh, participants from my own department from Bihar, and also other participants for making this a wonderful morning. Thank you very much. Wish you all the best. Stay blessed. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. So may I leave? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can. Okay. Stay safe. This is Prashant College signing off. Goodbye. Dear participants, please notice that Toto has acquired certificates. You can link from the WhatsApp group. And those who have not acquired certificates, please continue. It might be a technical error. We, we will rectify it and issue the certificates as soon as possible. Thank you. <laughs>